Hello everyone. If you are full stack engineer or the front end developer and you are looking for the code where you could connect your core UI front end with Quarkus Java backend, this tutorial is for you. Hello again. My name is Avkash and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can connect your core UI React based code or the React based front end code with the Quarkus Java based backend code. In this tutorial, we are using the core UI React admin template as our base code for the front end application. And for the backend, we are using the Quarkus Java backend code which is created using Quarkus uh, website micro profile code uh, template. We, and this template code had support for RESTful interface and, and we implement two interfaces in the backend code and we connect these two interfaces from the core UI base front end code. So let's get started. The code related with this tutorial is located at public code repo which is public at the prodramp github account visit to the java folder and this tutorial is related with core ui connection with quarkus backend and the core ui front end and the quarkus web app these two folder has the full backend and the front end code implemented if you would want to follow this tutorial step by step and you need the starter code for you to follow this uh, tutorial steps and you want to keep adding your code then please visit this starter folder inside a starter you will find core ui front end and the quarkus web app code so these two are template code with no support to connecting from back end to front end and front end to back end so Quarkus web app just has a base application a programming interface endpoint built into. Same thing with Core UI, just a cloned version of React admin template. So these are the two sample base code which you could use to follow this tutorial and complete connectivity between Core UI frontend and Quarkus web app back. If you would want to get the code for this tutorial, please visit Core UI frontend and Quarkus web app. So at the very first step, we are going to create a Quarkus based template or the web application project with support to just two endpoints, version and hello. And as you already know, is that the Quarkus is one of the very popular Java framework to build the Kubernetes native Java applications. And it supports OpenJDK, Hotspot, and GraalVM. So if you are trying to create the Java applications which are native to Kubernetes, then Quarkus is one of your top choice available. So to create the template project, we are coming to start coding. And as you could see here, there is a support for various libraries or modules available within the Quarkus mm -hmm. framework. So the list is really very long. We have web and then comes with the data and then keep going down and then messaging component. And if you are looking into more then core, reactive, cloud, observability, security, serialization, and alternative long languages integration. So as you could see here, massive collection of framework components are available for you to choose. So it's very powerful and it has support for almost every possible combination of library and functional requirement as your business or your project required. For this sample demo where we are trying to connect Quarkus backend with the core UI front end, we are creating a very simple sample application. So we will call it com dot 
prod ramp as our definition and we will call it Quarkus web app and our build tool will be the Gradle and version you could change here if you would want and then Java version we are going to use 11 and we will request Quarkus project to be created with the source code. So we will have a template source code also available. And because we just want to create the two endpoint in this application, so we will choose this REST easy JAX RS. So we will have support for REST endpoint and we can say just add the REST client too. So just two extensions or framework components are needed for us to get our project ready and then generate your application. And that's what you are going to see that zip is available related with our Quarkus web app and we will be able to use this code as our base code for this tutorial. In this next step we are going to unzipping this code and as you could see here here is our code and now we are going to take this code and taking this code and moving into our project root where the Quarkus application as well as the core UI front end code, they both ex exist at the same place. At this place, we have Quarkus Chakra UI code and Quarkus Core UI. So this project is related with Quarkus Core UI and we will have code here. So here is our Quarkus Core UI location at the GitHub public code repo. So the Quarkus backend code and the core UI frontend code, they both going to be available here. And the local folder where we have the code related with this tutorial is also available here. So you can see public code Java. And here we have Quarkus core UI. And there is no code available. So very first thing we are going to move our Quarkus web app code here. So here is our Quarkus web app code. So we are going to take this whole code and we are going to move this whole code in this Quarkus core UI web app code. So Quarkus core UI and this code is going to be moved here. So now we have Quarkus web app code available here. And if we look into here, the code is available. So we are Quarkus web app. Now, as you could see here, there is a command available for us to just very quickly test our application. So we could run it. Riddle Quarkus Dev is downloading all the dependencies required for our project. After the dependencies will be downloaded, this application will start and application is started. And this application is running at localhost 8080. Here is our code. We can look into this endpoint. And here is the hello, rest easy is working. Now, in this next step, we are going to open this code in this IntelliJ IDE. So we could take a look how the code look like and then subsequently add support for hello and version endpoint. So here is the Quarkus core UI project. This is the Quarkus web app. This is our Java application, which we have just started. So we are going to open this Quarkus web app here. Here is the Quarkus web app code. Source, main, Java, and here is our getting resource. Here's the hello rest easy. And we can say hello from Quarkus backend. So this will be our code here and as you see here, they, we change the code, code is updated. However, if you remember that we have started this code from command line. So we will stop running from here and we will run this code directly from our IDE. So here is our IDE code and we can open this view tool window for the Gradle. Here is our Gradle window. Here is Quarkus and here is a Quarkus build. Application can be built. And then Quarkus tab, here is our Quarkus application is started. And if you would want, you can connect this Quarkus application through this uh, port 5005 as, as a debugger. Here we are. 
and our application is running. So Quarkus and here is the endpoint hello. So let's, so let's try to add one more endpoint to here and we call it version resource. Just call it path version and let's use this get and this thing uh, produces the media type text plane return a string app version return 1.0.1 dot one, for example that's what it is and then version is there now we can come back here and we can say what is the situation with version and 1.0.1 so string is coming here if you look into the our application you could see here that this is the swagger ui supported code which is already built into in our template project so if you are wondering where this code is coming from we can take a very quick look this code is coming from resource meta inf resources and here is the index.html so this whole code is coming from this html code and if you see here here is this hello request is built into here that's what it is so if you would want to connect your version request very quickly you could add here so this is your code and there could be your version version we have saved it and we can reload here is your hello here is version if you want to call version there is a version launch if you would want to hello here is your hello. so you can get an idea that where this html is coming from related with this code now here is our version resource so very quickly we have done what if you would want to get this variable coming out from config property application property so you could define here application dot version equals you could say 1.0.1 and you could call this thing here so you could say the config property and you are saying is that the property is name equals application dot version and this is app version so this will become app version and now you can replace this thing with app version and making this call will give you this value coming out from there so we have added version endpoint and the hello was already there so that is hello now we at least get started for ourselves with our quarkus backend code at this point we are going to add our core ui based front end code here is our core ui and if you are interested to learn more about core ui Look into this page and there is a wealth of information we are looking into the core ui react support so here is the core ui react free admin template which is available here we can clone it so here we are java we can go quarkus core ui and git clone here is a core ui free template we can call it core ui front end so this will became our front end code and other became back end code as core ui and npm install so we are installing all the packages required for this core ui front end admin template after the installation is completed npm run start and here our ui will start for this core ui template there you go and your core ui template is up and running now our next step will be to open this core ui code in the visual studio code ide 
here is the Visual Studio IDE where we are going to open this code related with Java, Quarkus Core UI and Core UI front end. So this is the code which we are going to open it. Here is the code. We can look into the source and here is the layout views and here is the dashboard. Here is the dashboard what we are seeing at this point. So we're over to the render start. So here is the return render. This is the traffic. Let's look into the start from traffic. We can card body see row. We can add one more row here. Message. And as you could see here, that's the place where we are getting our message printed. It means when we are going to connect our core UI with the Quarkus base backend code, the result coming out from the backend will be rendered here. So very quickly we could see where the messages are. So that's our core UI frontend and that is our Quarkus backend. So we, now we have both Quarkus and core UI code side by side available for us to work and the results will be displayed here. In the next step, we are going to start adding support for backend connectivity in the core UI code. So let's come to the core UI code. At the very first step, we need to support the connection to the backend through this proxy. And why proxy is really needed is that because if you look into our backend code, which is running on the port 8080, we also know that our front end code is running port 3000. It means now this code which is running on port 3000 has to connect to the code which is running on the local host port 8080. So the request will go through the proxy server. So we need to add support in the front end code to use the proxy. So at the source level, we are creating this file called setup proxy.js and we are going to add this code which I already have a template code. So it's using the module called HTTP proxy middleware and here is the prefix it use and here is the target means this is a backend code localhost 8080. However, if your code is running anywhere in world as long as you have a fully qualified network name or fully qualified DNS name and the proper port and a valid connectivity means there is no setup and any extra prop configuration required for you to connect from your front end a node server code to all the way back end you can connect to anywhere in what this back end using this proxy so we have added that here so proxy now just to make sure that we have support for http proxy middleware in our package.json and it's a dev dependency because that is only needed during the development time. So we could add this dependency here and then the module version because I was using last time that version was 0.19.1. So I will be using the same version here 19.1. Please feel free to update it depending on your project requirement. So we have added this. So we added setup proxy and then package.json. And now because we have added support for setup proxy and then we also added the module. So the best option for us is to take this project, stop it and restart it. So this way, when this node server will start, it will have support for proxy connectivity to the backend. Now, as the front end code is ready, now we are going to add support for backend connectivity in our core UI code. So here, once we have implemented support for setup proxy and, and its dependent module, now we are going to create an API section where we could connect the front end to backend connection over the get and post methods and any other supported methods. So I will be creating a folder in the SRC name API 
and in this API folder, I will be creating two separate JavaScript component, one for get and one for post. So I will call very first one server connect get.js. And the second will be post.js. So let's look into the server connect get. I already have a template code which I will be using as it is, and I will be explaining you. So here you see that I'm implementing a get rest request function which take a URL along with the object. So this URL is used along with this definition of our server, whatever it's really going to connect. And request goes with this method type get and headers are added. And after that request goes and the response come back, then this check status is called, which looks into the response dot status to be to make sure it's between 200 and 299. And after that, if everything is valid, then it parses that response and make it a JSON object. And finally, that object is available in this get result object, which is available here. It means you can, whenever you are going to call this method, you are going to pass the URL and the object where you want the result back. And the result will be available for you to in that call. So this is the for get. Now we are looking into the post request. So post request code is quite identical, uh, quite similar is a better way to say. So here is our post with just a very little difference. As you, as you could see, quite similar. Only difference is that it has a one more parameter and that is because when you are sending post request, you are sending the post body. So here is the post body you are sending. That's JSON object is stringify. So it's became a JSON to text string and now text is basically being sent from here. So request content type is a JSON type. So even if a stringification happened to the object, but still it's a content type is JSON. So application.json and rest of everything is same. So whenever you are going to make a post call to the backend, you are going to provide the URL means a slash parameter or slash the API name because the URL is already been defined earlier. Post body data you are be giving or result will be stored back into this object. So now we have added support for get and post in our code. It means we pretty much ready now and this code can be called in the place wherever we want to collect that result. So now what we will do because this is the place where we want to see our result. So we are going to make a call here so that we can get store those results. So here is our code. Let's try to import get rest object. So here you see the server connect then import post rest object. So we have access to these two. Now in our next step is to make the call and get the result back. So remember we already have get implemented in our JavaScript. We have hello which support get. We have version which support get so we can make a call now. Here is our code. Here is the dashboard function. And we are coming into the that is rendering. Just make a call here. Here is a very simple code where we are calling hello. And this hello is request is going to the back end. The response will be stored in get result object. And we are going to see this result here. We can save it, reload the page. And because we are writing the result back into the console. So let's open the console. Here is our console. Reload this page. Let's take a look at network. Here is the hello call. And request, as you could see here, it's a 404 not found. So you see here that request is going to the hello. And if we look into this implementation for us, it's expecting us 
to send this request through v1 and then the request here. So in order to make that request standard and going correctly, the best option would be that we can also implement the v1 hello in the Java side code. So here is our Java code. We can say, let's use v1 for the version and we can also use the hello is the API version is hello. Then make sure in our index.html, we also update. So this, the backend, it hitting the v1 version and v1 hello. Let's check version is using v1 version and let's check hello it's using v1 hello everything looks good now we come back to the here now we also make sure that we are making call to front end code v1 hello we saved it we made a call to the back end Now we can look into the hello call. And as you could see here, it actually no longer the 404. Now its request is made here, there, but it's a, there was no data found, but it's a 406. It means that 406 is not acceptable. It means the communication between front end and back end was created, but something was not right. We can go look into our the back end code again here. And one big difference is that's mediator because this the communication is happening at a plain text plane. But as you remember, we are making this connection from front end over JSON because the implementation for get is application JSON. So we are going to change this thing. We say this guy is also support application JSON and similar to that, we also need to support application JSON for both. Now we come back here and again make the request. Looks like hello is the request made 200 OK. And if we look into the response, there is a string response coming back from the back end. It means at least we have made connection from back end to front end here successfully but one big problem is that this is just a text-based response so what we can do is that we could change that backend re re response to a json here so you can actually say a string backend and here is your message which is json response so now we need to escape this properly so this is our a string but this is not really escaped properly so we have to escape all these hello there you go now json response is there it's exactly a json response and we can call it json response and this app version is basically here so we could move it there success plus plus app version at this point we need to add this now this is completed so here is your change and same thing we could do for greeting resource say hello from here there is nothing like that so status is success and and, and here is our JSON string. Save. Come back here. Look into the hello. As you could see here, we are getting this JSON string. Core UI. Here is our hello and this is the JSON object. It means if we have that correct, we could replace this and we can see that message in the 
friend pen code. So if we want to save this data to the state object, let me move this code to top. There are the state objects we can add here. So there is okay. as here version set version. If these are hello and because it's a JSON value, so we can say set them as a default as an empty array. And here is for hello and here is for version and we can say same thing for here if version and then we can set version now we have both version and hello if we want to render them set version let's here we can say hello because this is a json value so we need to stringify otherwise it will not be printed correctly here so once we stringify the hello we could do exactly same thing for the version and let's let's take a look if there is any error what could be the error here Use the state is not defined. Oh, and here you could see that the message is coming out from the backend is a json message message so we could see the json message but in the second version we do not see a message coming out properly so let's fix that code also so here is our hello here is our version so we need to convert that to json so here is this and app version so message will be the app version and looks like everything should be okay now if we come back here reload and as you could see here, both these values are available for us correctly. Now we can, we can get the JSON object. So if you would want to see the version value, so we could say version dot message and we don't need to stringify it. And that will be application version save. It means you could access the response as an object and as you could see here that your objects are available in the json format and then now you could just use the parameter pure json objects are available for you in the next step we are going to add support for post in the backend code we are going to add support for post so it means we need to add support post and when we have post is going to consume media type which is application json and it is also going to produce media type dot application json let's add this guy i already have a code already added here so let's use that code it's going to be a little faster for us and that's where so we are using hello it's going to take the parameter and parameter will be we are going to send something as a post request post parameter and the result will be stored whatever is we coming back from here we are going to send a post request with a post parameter so let's come back and implement first post code here and then we can go look more deeper into there so we are here is our so we can say let's make a call here so it's gonna be 
Postgres object, post press request and it's going to be hello. So we are implementing hello, get and post together and we need to pass the value here. So we need to create a variable. We just call it post body and that will be param body as request and this post body will be the asset and here we need to add a new where you will call hello post use hello post this hello post will be here so post body is sending param body and here's the code so the post param actually so we can change this to post parameter so here is the post parameter it's sending core ui request and your response will be back here so this is a hello post so hello post and let's try to render that also here Hello post. Now we need to come back here and make sure that this is result data and that is implemented as a v1 hello and implemented as post. And here is your third one. So here you see you are sending core UI request and you are getting response back here. So this is the first one is get, second one is get and third one is post request. So one more time, the backend has a very simple post implementation which reads the parameter and parse the parameter for key as a post param get that response result for that variable in the param value and add into here param and then send all the request uh, response back to the ui if we are looking into the ui very simple code it uses the Postgres object which is implemented here and this is what we are sending to the back end from the front end. This is post body. Here is the response coming back to us. So that's all we really needed in this sample code to implement the connectivity between core UI front end and Quarkus Java back end. And that's all we have really done in this project. So now what we are going to do is that we are going to take this project and push all that code here. So here was our Quarkus web app and here is our core UI front end. We have added core UI front end and we have also added this back end which is a Quarkus web app. Or added so now you have this core UI front end code and you have back end code here. So let's into Quarkus code. So for you, whenever you need to have connectivity established between core UI and uh, Quarkus back end, you can get this code directly from here and that will be full ready-made code for you to connect your core UI front end with Quarkus backend. One more sample project I already have and that is connecting your core UI with Python. And I do have that code available in my tutorials. Here is the code and that is connecting core UI front end with Python backend. So if you are a front end developer and you want to learn how to connect core UI front end with the Python backend, please go ahead and uh, use this tutorial and in within the five steps, you would be able to connect your core UI front end with Python 3.8 or 9 or 7 backend. And the same code also work with Python 2.7 if that is what your requirements are. 
so that's all i had in this tutorial for you so that's all i had for you in this tutorial i hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and i will be seeing you in my next tutorial thank you that's all my friends if you have enjoyed our content please like it share it subscribe it and finally please remember be good and do good thank you